In May of 2007, Governor Brad Henry signed legislation creating the Oklahoma Bioenergy Center, a $40 million research collaboration between the University of Oklahoma, Oklahoma State University, and the Samuel Roberts Noble Foundation. I sat down with representatives from all three groups to talk about the development of Oklahoma's biofuel industry. Well, gentlemen, this is the second year that we've had the GROW conference. What's happened in the past 365 days to get us to that point where we can have a sustainable biofuels industry? I think the biggest thing is the, the actual passage of the Oklahoma uh, Bioenergy Act, which created the Oklahoma Bioenergy Center. And that's the effort to pull together the existing programs at OU, OSU, and the Noble Foundation into one cohesive program. And so uh, there's certainly individual research going on there, but our effort is to try to make uh, the individual pieces greater as a sum part. And so uh, the intent of coordinating the research across the three institutions has to yield uh, a much greater uh, return to the Oklahoma uh, as a state and its people. Well, from the first GROW conference, I'd also add that uh, the, the visibility, the, the ability of bringing people together has increased, uh, whether it's government, industry, uh, researchers, because of interest in the fact that this state is leading an effort in cellulosic ethanol, brings attention not only in the state, but also across the nation. So uh, it's bringing resources to the state as well. Yeah, I think one of the nice things about the OBC already is that I've become much more aware of what's going on at Noble and at OSU. Uh, and that's, that's integral to really uh, putting together this entire value chain effort that's going to take it all the way from how you grow the stuff to how you convert it into the fuels. So Steve, if we're developing a whole new type of science, how do we do it? Well, I think it's just the way we're, 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 we're tackling the situation with the OBC is the fact that it's, for us in Oklahoma, it's completely across the value chain. So we're starting with, with limited resources, what's the best crop for our farmers and ranchers? And then we're taking it straight through to conversion. So if you're going to design a production solution, make it for the target crop. If you're going to design a harvest and transport system, make it for our targeted crop. And if you're going to design a conversion system, tailor it to uh, Oklahoma's crop. And I think that's what's very different about the OBC versus other state initiatives in the sense that they're looking at individual research projects and whether they relate to one another, they most likely don't. With what we're trying to accomplish is we take a, uh, a, a given feedstock and we try to find a solution to it all the way through the value chain. Ray, over the past several years, I've had the pleasure of, of covering this story, the biofuel story with you. And it always seems like the science is just on the horizon. I know it's very difficult, but are we closer than we were last year from a scientific standpoint? Sure, uh, we definitely are closer. Uh, anytime that question is asked, there's a lot of caveats that are added to it. It's based on resources, time, personnel, and industry support. And really, those are coming together now. So I definitely feel even more confident than before that we will have a cellulosic ethanol industry established uh, within, say, three or four years. That doesn't mean it's going to be many plants across the landscape, but uh, that one commercial size facility will really open the gates for other commercial entities, especially for Oklahoma.